Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us here this morning. My name is Jared Bueller. I'm one of the detectives investigating the homicide of 31-year-old Kelsey Willette, who was murdered in the Oliver area on November 5th, 2022. On behalf of the Edmonton Police Service and the homicide team investigating this matter, I would like to extend my sincerest condolences uh, to Kelsey's family. I'll begin by reading a brief statement from her family. Our family's hearts are broken at Kelsey's death. There are no words to convey the experience of losing a loved one in the manner that Kelsey was taken from us. Our daughter was a beautiful, smart, and vibrant woman who loved life, family, friends, and children. We desperately need answers as to why she was taken from us. Kelsey will be forever missed and never forgotten. Our family will not be able to rest until her murder is solved. We urge anyone with information to contact the Edmonton Police Service. We have invited you here today to share some developments in the investigation and to request the assistance of the media and public in helping us piece together the events that led to Kelsey's murder. On Saturday, November 5th, 2022, at approximately 7.30 p.m., numerous reports of gunshots in the area of Jasper Avenue and 116th Street were received through our police dispatch and 911 communication center. Downtown Division patrol officers responded to the area where Kelsey was located. Responding police officers and paramedics provided emergency first aid at the scene for multiple apparent gunshot wounds. However, Kelsey was pronounced dead from her injuries on scene. The autopsy confirmed the cause of death to be multiple gunshot injuries. The manner of death was homicide. Over the past 10 days, the investigation has endeavored to establish a picture of Kelsey's life. In particular, the six month period leading up to her murder, which we have learned was marked by a life changing event. Through the investigation, we have come to believe that the circumstances and events surrounding that event may be connected to her murder. While I am unable to speak specifically to the nature of these events, we are now certain there are individuals who knew Kelsey who will recognize these circumstances. Some of these people have yet to come forward and have yet to be located by the investigation. To these individuals and others privy to their information who we expect are following this story in the media and on social media, we urge you to contact the police immediately. Your information is important to the investigation. Ms. Willette's murder does not appear to be random. Our investigation suggests it was a planned ambush against a defenseless victim. This morning, we released video footage of the suspect vehicle immediately prior to the murder. The vehicle is a white Toyota Highlander SUV. We have also released a photo of a 2016 white Toyota Highlander that was found burning near 259th Avenue and 18th Street at approximately 8.45 p.m., just over an hour after Kelsey was murdered. While forensic and other evidence has yet to confirm definitively that the vehicles are one and the same, the circumstances strongly suggest this to be the case, and this hypothesis is being actively pursued. I can advise that the recovered, burned 2016 Toyota Highlander was stolen from Northwest Calgary in August of 2022. It was later equipped with a stolen license plate from another vehicle in West Edmonton in early October 2022. The stolen license plate number, Alberta plate CKP5569, was also the subject of a photo radar ticket taken on Friday, October 21st, 2022, in the westbound lanes of Yellowhead Trail at 107th Street. Based on this information, we know that the Toyota Highlander suspected to be involved in this murder may have been in active circulation within Edmonton or the surrounding area during October and November 2022. 
the time period leading up to this murder. While the vehicle may have passed through several hands prior to the murder, we can be confident there are individuals, even if by virtue of possessing this stolen vehicle, that can assist in telling the vehicle's story. When not in motion, the vehicle is likely to have been parked or stored somewhere in and around the city, perhaps a nuisance on your street, alley, parking lot, or parkade. Likewise, if anyone recalls seeing this vehicle or any unusual vehicle in and around the burn site, please contact police as this information can be useful to our investigation. I'll conclude by thanking you, the media, for your attention to the story and those witnesses who have already come forward to speak with us. As with all homicide investigations, we will continue to pursue all avenues of information in hopes of bringing some closure to Kelsey's family and friends. Finally, I'd like to remind uh, the public that anonymous tips can be, all, can be submitted through Crime Stoppers. I'll take any questions now. Why are you unable to tell us what the nature of this life-changing event is? We're confident that the people who are aware of this event and the events surrounding it will, will understand what it is. Is and that good enough for the public or the media to buy in? Pardon me? Is that good enough for the public or the media to buy in? I'll be honest, I'm speaking directly to the people who are aware of these events because those are the people whose information we need. Again, some of those people have uh, are likely, uh, I believe, are following the story closely in the media. Um, we can't locate them at the moment, but we know they have information of relevance to the investigation. And we're here today to ask them directly to come forward with that information. Is the life-changing event criminal in nature? I'm not prepared to discuss any information about what that event was. How long has Ms. Zulet lived in the Edmonton area for? Several years. Okay, she's from St. Catharines, Ontario? Uh, I'm not going to discuss uh, any information around uh, her personal circumstances or family circumstances out of respect for the family's privacy. Was she married? Was she single? Is she a mother? What can you tell us about her? What did she do for a living? She was, she was single at the time of her death. Was the life-changing event a, a relationship breakdown? Pardon me? Was the life-changing event a relationship I, I Again, I'm not going to discuss any specifics around that event. This seems uh, that with a car being burned in a remote location after a shooting, there's been at least two other incidents like that. Is this a pattern <coughs> of some sort that is related? I think, say, it's... It's very common to see this uh, uh, a homicide, a burned vehicle. Um, uh, we've seen many cases in Edmonton. I'm sure uh, you're aware that this happens in other parts of the country as well. Um, uh, it's somewhat rare to see uh, a female victim uh, in these situations. Uh, normally, it's associated to gang uh, violence, um, but we do see this relatively frequently in, in shooting events, yes. Are you able to rule out any gang activity in this particular situation? All I can say in that regard is that um, there were people uh, in, in Kelsey's orbit who are well known to police. There was a news release put out on November the 3rd uh, asking for the public to identify a photo of a woman uh, in relation to a firearms investigation. Uh, someone in our newsroom suggested that that woman in that photo looks like Ms. Ouellette. Can you say yes or no to that? I'm actually not familiar with the photo that, uh, that you're speaking about, so it, it wasn't related to our investigation. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, this is a difficult question to ask, but it was again suggested in our newsroom that perhaps one of the reasons why specific attention is being brought to this case is because the victim is a young, pretty, white female. Can you address that, please? 
we're uh, in this case, uh, shooting investigations like this, as I've already said, are exceptionally difficult. Um, uh, I can only speak to the investigations I'm involved with. Um, and I know that uh, in some of those investigations, we've, we've appealed to the media uh, and to the public for information because um, we, we need that information to, to further the investigation, to, to get anywhere. Um, as I mentioned, in these types of events, there's, there's very little uh, forensic evidence left behind in a shooting. So um, the, the specific reason to, to bring this case to, to the attention of the media is there, there are people that we need to speak to, that we, the investigation has uh, informed us, have knowledge around uh, very specific circumstances that are likely to relate to, to this murder. And uh, for, for their own reasons, um, perhaps, they're involved in criminal lifestyles. Uh, they may not be willing to, to come forward. Uh, they may be difficult to locate. Um, I'm not suggesting that they're necessarily responsible for this murder, but uh, we need to speak with those people. This um, is a group that typically would not cooperate with police? Well, as I said, there are people in her, in her life, in her, her orbit, whether uh, you know, socially or, or otherwise, uh, that are well known to police, um, and uh, often those people don't want to speak with the police. They don't want to cooperate with the investigation. Um, I think it's fair to say that this file is exceptional in that the victim appears to um, not necessarily have been directly involved in criminal activity herself, but was for some reason targeted. And uh, I think um, there's reason to believe that people in those communities may be willing to speak to us, uh, whereas they, they might not otherwise be able to speak with us because of the fact that people are willing to reach out and target someone on the periphery uh, of this activity. Are you saying she's an innocent victim? An, an innocent victim? I don't think any victim uh, deserves to be shot in the manner uh, that Kelsey was. Um, any homicide is investigated the same, whether uh, regardless of a person's circumstances. Um, so I don't know that I can really uh, answer that question. Prior to this homicide, was she known to police either here or in Ontario? Uh, no, not, in, not in the criminal sense at all. I mean, uh, no. The answer to that is, is simply no. I mean, we all have... Uh, you know, pop up on, on a police database because of a photo radar ticket or something like that, but um, no more so than you or I would be known to the police. Um, yeah, no. Um, and finally, the area where she was shot, Jasper 116, was she there for a reason? Is that close to where she lived? Or? It was close to where she lived, yes. So there would be a reason for her to be there? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I think further to that, this is a targeted shooting. Is there concern about the, the way it's being done in public? You know, is, are there dangers involved in that? We've seen this uh, a few times lately. Oh, of course. Anytime a, a firearm is, is discharged uh, in, a, in a public area, it's of great concern to us. And that's been certainly a topic of other uh, recent media releases. And I've spoken to you uh, within the past year about the exact same thing. Uh, you know, brazen uh, targeted shootings um, around people's homes. Um, of course, we're concerned about that. Um, I think, you know, if, if anything, this year is showing us that uh, it doesn't matter what area of the city you live in, whether it's the, uh, you know, suburban West End or, 
uh, central Edmonton, um, uh, there's people who are willing to, um, you know, take out their, um, you know, or do their criminal business in any area of the city and uh, put anyone's life at risk. Uh, obviously, we're concerned about that. You said you're speaking out to the people that you know may know something, but you've also indicated they may have criminal history, et cetera, which would stop them from yeah. speaking out. How is this going to push them over the top to come and speak to you in your opinion? Well, at this point, some of those people, so you know, to give you a very specific example, I said that um, uh, this particular stolen Toyota Highlander, in my experience, a stolen vehicle can pass through many hands in a very short period of time. In this case, this vehicle has been outstanding since the summer of 2022. Okay, so th in theory, uh, many people may have had control of this vehicle or ridden in that vehicle, not even knowing that it was stolen. Um, but uh, establishing the timeline, if we can, around that vehicle would assist us in, in determining how it came to be in the hands of the, the suspects, uh, suspect or suspects that were involved in this shooting. Um, you know, uh, someone may be worried or that the fact that they had driven this vehicle, um, you know, obviously putting them in possession of stolen property uh, might put them in some jeopardy. Um, so part of talking to you today is to, you know, reassure them to a degree that we are not doing a, a, a theft investigation. We're doing a homicide investigation. And we realize that, um, you know, uh, people's circumstances are complex, uh, but that our goal here is to investigate the homicide of Kelsey Willette, not someone's possession of a stolen vehicle a month ago but understanding how that vehicle came to be in Edmonton, where it was in Edmonton, and how it may have ended up in the hands of someone who's willing to commit a, a, you know, a violent offense like this is important to the investigation. Um, someone may have given that vehicle to the, to the shooter. They may have never known that this was the intention. Um, you know, but now that you know the end result, uh, my appeal to them is to do the right thing. Um, we understand that uh, people come in all shades of gray and we're willing to, to look past that in this case to, to help uh, bring some justice to this young lady's family. Prior to the shooting, had Ms. Ouellette reached out to police uh, out of any fear for her safety? No, not that I'm aware of. Any final questions? Thank you. Thanks for coming.